Welcome to KeyboardBlues.com. This is Chapter 8 from Blues for Piano and Keyboard. Congratulations, you made it all the way to Chapter 8. You must be very interested in learning to play the blues. Now back in Chapter 6, I taught you something called a static riff. It sounded like this. Now if that seems familiar to you, let's go on. If not, go back and check out Chapter 6, because we're going to build on that today. Now we call that a static riff, because it never changes. That's what static means. Like static on the radio, the static never changes. You only hear that if you fall asleep in front of the radio and wake up at 2 in the morning and you hear that static. Now this static riff, it's played by the right hand in the same exact spot every time while the left hand plays different chords. Now you can go back to chapter 6 and review that if you need to. But today, I want to show you something different about that static riff that I kept teasing you about in chapter 6. Remember at the end of the blues, I would always play these long bluesy phrases? And then I told you I'd show it to you in the next chapter, and I never did. We will get to it today. But in chapter 7, I ended up showing you those powerful left-hand comp chords. Remember that? I hope you enjoyed chapter 7. There was some great stuff for your left hand in there. But today, we're going to dig back into the static riff from chapter 6. And I'm going to show you how to extend it into a nice, long, bluesy phrase. Now that long extended version of the static riff might sound really complicated to play, but let me blow your mind. The long extension of this static riff is really simple. In fact, you know most of it already if you learn chapter 6. It's actually the same static riff two times, high and low. Now in between the high static riff and the low static riff, there's a tiny little riff that connects the two. I call it the connector. <laughs> what a great little name. How did I ever think of that? This is what it sounds like. So here's the static riff with the connector. Then you play the same static riff an octave lower. Now here's what it sounds like all together up to speed. Let's do that one more time. Here's the static riff up high. Here's the connector. And finally, the static riff again lower. Now that was nice and slow. I can't wait till you can play this on your keyboard. But there's even more. Once you learn to do that, you can keep running the static riff and the connector, static riff and connector, all the way down to the bottom of the keyboard, and it sounds fantastic. Let's play it like that once. This time we're going to kick the tempo all the way up, and we're going to run that thing all the way down the keyboard. Here it is. Now I know that may be a little over the top to make that riff roll all the way down the keyboard. A little flashy, a little dramatic. But every musician's got to have a few tricks in the bag, right? I mean, drummers can twirl their sticks. So keyboard players, when they do, roll this baby all the way down the keyboard. And then look at the drummer and say, hey, you're not so tough. At this point in the blues course, you're either really digging into the keyboard and really loving this stuff. Or maybe you're scratching your head and you're wishing you could understand it just a little more. If that's the case you really need to go through our course titled Pattern Piano and Keyboard. 
You can check this course out online at playpianotoday.com. Go there, and it'll give you an online video demo of what it means to play the piano or the keyboard by ear using the revolutionary technique of rhythmic patterns. Now, this course starts simply from the ground up. It assumes that you've never played, but then it progresses quickly through college-level techniques. By the end of the course, you'll have an entire arsenal of rhythmic patterns that you can use to play any song by ear. In addition, a large part of this course is taken up with teaching you to create your own patterns. Now, this is where you'll develop your own unique style on the keyboard. You'll be able to create songs and arrangements that are all your own. This is super exciting stuff. If you really want to study, if you really want to become a great musician, buy that course and go through it. It's really not that expensive, but it's very thorough, and it'll get you up to speed quickly. Now, before we play through the 12-bar blues in this chapter, I want to show you one more thing. If you remember, way back in some of the earlier chapters in this blues course, you'll remember the very first right-hand blues riff that I taught you. Remember that? It was called riff number one. Now, if you need to, go back and review those chapters. The reason that I'm bringing it up is because we're going to use it when we play through the 12-bar blues in just a minute. But I'm going to use it a little differently than we learned it. I'm going to play it up really high and twice in a row, like this. The thing that will really change the riff character this time is that I won't play it on the same beat that I did when we first learned it. What I mean is this. When we learned riff number one for the first time, I always started playing it on the first beat of each measure. One, two, three, four, one. This really emphasized or accented the first chord. One, two, three, four. This time, I'll start on the second beat of each measure, and then I'll play it twice in a row. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. This really makes different sections of the riff get accented and brings new life to it. Now, the reason I'm doing this is to make a point. I want to show you that you can take all these riffs, change them however you want to, and use them in your own unique way. After all, that's the goal of all of our courses, to teach you many different skills and many different patterns, as well as how to weave them together in your own unique way so that you can become a creative musician, because that is where the real fun is. All right, you know a whole lot of stuff by now, but did you know there's really an infinite number of ways that you can put it all together? Here's one version. Well, now, there is a whole lot of notes that you just learned off of KeyboardBlues.com. I hope you're having a great time with all of this. I certainly am. And guess what? There's a whole lot more to come. In this website, there's a wealth of online piano and keyboard lessons that you can dig into right away, including this lesson. Before you leave this site, though, would you do us a favor? If these lessons are valuable to you and you'd like to see more, would you just take a minute and leave a comment on the site that you're on right now? Or you can simply rate the video. Either way, it really helps us and enables us to post lessons just like this one, free of charge. Thanks. Thanks.